What we wanted to show was the extent to which teachers' expectations could actually affect pupils' intellectual performance, for example, their IQ scores. So what we did was we tested everybody in a school with a test that pretended to be a test that would predict academic blooming, so-called Harvard test of inflected acquisition. And allegedly on the basis of that test, but not really, we gave each of the teachers in the school the names of a handful of children in her classroom that would get smart in the academic year ahead. These kids' names were taken out of a hat. We, we chose them by means of a table of random numbers. The children themselves did not know in any direct way that uh, teachers were holding certain expectations for them. Teachers were told not to tell the kids, and of course we didn't tell the, the children either. So the children never knew. And then when we tested the children a year later, we found that those kids who'd been alleged to their teachers to be showing or going to show intellectual gains, in fact showed greater intellectual gains than did the children of whom we'd said nothing in particular. So the kids actually got smarter when they were expected to get smarter by their teachers. Uh, we've come to feel that there are really four factors that operate in the mediation or communication of these self-fulfilling prophecies, especially in the classroom, but not only in the classroom. So what are these four things that teachers tend to do differently to kids for whom they have more favorable expectations? The first factor is the climate factor. Teachers tend to create a warmer climate for those children for whom they have more favorable expectations. They're just nicer to them both in terms of the things they say and also in the nonverbal channels of communication. The other uh, very important factor is the so-called input factor. That one probably won't surprise anyone. Teachers teach more material to those kids for whom they have more favorable expectations. After all, if you think a kid is dumb and can't learn, you're not going to put yourself out to try to teach them very much. Two other factors, though, make a difference. One is the response opportunity factor. That is, kids get more of a chance to respond if the teachers expect more of them. They call on them more often. When they do call on them, they let them talk longer, and they help and shape with them uh, the answers that the kids uh, speak out, kind of working together to put the response out. The last is feedback. The feedback uh, factor works in this way. As you might expect, if, it, if more is expected of a kid, the kid is praised more, uh, positively reinforced more for getting a good answer out. But interestingly enough, is given more differentiated feedback when they get the wrong answer. One of the ways in which you can sometimes tell a little bit that the teacher does not have very high expectations for a kid is that the teacher is willing to accept a low quality response or it won't really clarify what would have been a good quality response. Maybe because he or she feels, well, what's the use? The kid's not smart enough to profit from this additional clarification. So those are the four factors, climate, input, response opportunity, and feedback.